years of age when I went forward in the Delhi Church of Christ, Cincinnati, Ohio, church averaging about 50. And uh, I, my heart was strangely warmed. And uh, so it wasn't too long after that, as a matter of fact, it was about two years, a uh, fellow in the church by the name Mr. Lowe, uh, the only executive we had, he was executive with the Kroger Grocery Company, he said, would you like to go to a Christian camp? Well, we'd never heard of a Christian camp, and frankly, there weren't very many of them. But uh, we went to this one, it was just opening Sunday, down near uh, Williamstown, Kentucky. And uh, <laughs> it was quite a camp. I said to somebody, where, where are we going to eat? Well, we're going to eat, and they're going to cook under one funeral tent and eat under the other one. <laughs> I said, where are we going to sleep? I said, the boys are going to sleep in that barn in the hay, and the girls are going to sleep on the pews of a rural church. And we, we just thought that was the greatest thing in the world. We brushed our teeth in the creek, and uh, the girls did have an outhouse built for them, but the boys just went in the cornfield. And that, I, I just thought that was great. I went there several years. And um, while I was there, I dedicated my life specialized service. And I kept that promise uh, all the way, really. But it grew, it grew a little thin. My senior year of high school, I was about ready to graduate, and I got a job selling carpet downtown Cincinnati on the fifth floor of a big department store. I was making $35 a week plus commission. I was doing extremely well, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, doing 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 real well. And I, he said, "I'm going to make you the assistant manager." And I told my preacher James Walters about that, and he said, "Wayne, with your ability, I think God has something more special for you to do than to sell carpet." So I thought about that, and I was dating a Baptist preacher's daughter. And uh, on a Saturday night, I said, where will we go? She said, well, that is leading singing in revival over here in Dry Ridge. There was no interstate, but we, we went over there. And 19 people walked forward. And John, I, I was, that's the greatest thing I ever saw. Yeah. I, we, we didn't have that many join our church in a year. And so uh, the next day I asked my brother Bill, I had three brothers and a sister, if he thought I could be a preacher, he said yes. So that was in June or July, and I didn't do anything till September, and I went and enrolled in Cincinnati Bible Seminary. Then went home and told my parents, of course, I, <laughs> I knew they would be absolutely thrilled. So I won a contest the first month or two I was there in speaking, and my teacher, Ralph Dornetti, said, why don't you get a half-time church? So I wrote to a church down in Kentucky. They hired me $25 a week. I'd go down on Friday night, spend the night, be there Saturday, calling Sunday, come back Monday. And then about a month later, another church. They were that that other that first church averaged 52. This other church averaged 29. They both just had one room, no basement. One had a floor for us, the other had a pot belly stove. And so they came and paid me seventeen fifty to come down over the weekend. And so anyway, the story goes that uh, the, the the lesser of the two just mushroom, and we went full time, built a new building, and uh, and uh, IBM came to Lexington about that time, and it just so happened that the head of the search committee lived in Grant County. Uh, that was his home. Uh, so as he went to Grand County, he had passed my church, and he saw the tremendous growth. And so, when I when IBM came here, I, the Broadway Christian Church said we need to start a church in the South End. And so, this gentleman said, "I know just the guy," and so that's how they they asked me to come up there, and I turned them down at first because. I met with them and they were all old, I mean old, and scared me to death. And uh, so then, but we got, I got over that. And praise God I did, because it been a big mistake not to come here. So that's how I got to Lexington.
Broadway Christian Church started most of the Christian churches uh, of the Restoration Movement in Lexington, Kentucky. So when IBM came here in 1955, they said we need a church on the south end and they, they called me. And they built a building, 30 by 60, they would hold about 100 people and they said we'll pay your salary for one year. Well, they only had to pay it for a half year because uh, after calling for three months, we had 152 for Sunday. And soon after that, we had to go to dual services. And then, uh, then soon after that, we doubled the size of our building, uh, making it 60 by 60, and uh, doing real well. And I was preaching dual services and in between those teaching Sunday school. <laughs> and then uh, after, let's see, it was 1963, we decided that we need to build a big building. And uh, so we needed $300,000. It's a lot of money now, but there's a whole lot more money then. Mm -hmm. And of course, this was on one, one acre of ground. And uh, so I went to our bank and they turned us down. I went to two other banks, turned us down. And a fellow that sort of liked to get after me, he'd say, "When I, he said, I had more faith in you than that that you could get, you get that money." So I thought to myself, "Who is the most influential person in our church?" And it happened to be a fellow by the name of Jacobson. They've named the largest park in Lexington for him because he was the head of the water company. And I went to his office. I'd never seen a speaker phone before. And I, I told him that the uh, bank turned down our money. Well, he said, which bank is? So he called the chairman of the board of the bank. And in that phone call, it was a speaker phone, I, where you, everybody could hear. And I'd never seen that before. And he called this fellow. I'm not going to use all the words that they used. <laughs> but he said, Jacob, are you happy? No, no, I'm unhappy. Uh, you turned out my church. Well, he said, blank, blank. I didn't know you had a church. And he said, well, Black, I sure do have a church. <laughs> and uh, so uh, he said that, and, and uh, Jacobson said, if we, we don't get that 300,000, uh, I'm gonna move the water company assets over to uh, Central Bank. Well, Judge, don't do that. Well, he said, let's see the money. So we, following week, we got the money. It's the only church in Lexington I know that's been built on blackmail <laughs> that, that helps at times, one other thing. And from there we then uh, started a church, uh, Wally Rendell, we hired him, and we were running right at 900, and we hired him, and he came, and we bought a, uh, five acres of property for him, and we, we thought that was plenty, but uh, as it turned out, that, that was okay, but it certainly wasn't the blessing it should have been with any more property. And so after that, then, we were up to 1,301 on Hill and Dale. We had bought uh, uh, three or four pieces of property for basically Sunday school rooms, houses around us. And uh, so then we put in a search for other property, and so we bought, nine, uh, bought 10 acres of land five miles away in another county, Jessamine County. And just as soon as we bought that, it was obvious that uh, big things could happen. And so then we wanted to buy the rest of the farm, but the farmer knew that he had us. And so he put up uh, he, that he wanted a large amount of money. So the elders had a retreat, talked it over, prayed about it, and uh, bought 105 acres. And they said, we're not going to pay more than $2 million. Well, they came back and reported they had, they had pledged $2,100,000. And Gordon Walls, who was a deacon, said, Mr. Mossberger, I thought we weren't going to go more than $2 million. And he said, Gordon, when you get up to $2 million, another 100000 really doesn't make any difference. <laughs> so that's how we got to the building where, where, the, where we are now. And so I was there for 40 years and uh, we were running 
right at 4,500, and I decided to retire. Go ahead. Well, Wayne, uh, tell us this little story of Mossbar going over there trying to get the money from that fellow that owned some property. Well, uh, he, he went over and he said, well, well, make a bid for my property, make a bid. And Mossberg said, okay, we'll give you $10,000 an acre, which wasn't a bad price at all. Well, he was offended. And he said, I don't want anybody to come over here anymore, but my extremely good friend, uh, uh, what's his name that gave me cars? Lee, Lynn, no, Lee. J.L. Lynn? Huh? J.L. Lynn? No, no. Uh, another fellow. Uh, Went over and um, they they both smoked and they, and they smoked with him and finally he got him to take like a hundred thousand a year for X number of of uh, years and uh, so that's 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 where we got the property and then when I left well then uh, they called a, a preacher what's his name <laughs> they called him. Followed me. We, bro. Mike, Mike bro. Mike, Mike bro. And uh, he immediately changed things around and got into the contemporary. You know, we didn't really have much of that. And that, for whatever reason, caught on and uh, just kept going up. And then he was there about seven years and left to go to a large church in the Chicago area. And they hired. Uh, John Weiss, who uh, was on the staff already, and he was preaching on um, Wednesday nights to run around 1,500 people. So they they hired him, and now they're running right at 13,000 uh, a Sunday with these two satellite churches, one in one in Danville, and the other one on Richmond Road. Yeah, and they announced. Uh, they announced just recently that they're going to start a church in Georgetown. Uh, the name I couldn't remember is such a so good to me in so many ways. Lynn Aldridge. Oh yeah, Lynn Aldridge. Lynn Aldridge. Yeah. So uh, the church, I, I now get a pension. They're very fair, and very, very nice, and and I, I give a lot of advice, and I now speak to small groups. Uh, but uh, I don't preach in church anymore. I, I I use a walker and I don't see much out of my right eye. And I I just thought it was time to lay it lay it up, you know. So. Thank you so much, Wayne. Um, can you share with us some of your favorite memories of Southland? Yes, uh, you know I can share a lot of memories around your dad. Uh, if there was ever a preacher that didn't need an office, it was John Fresco, because his office was his car. And uh, there's a saying that says, churches are held together with worthy preaching, but they're built with shoe leather and automobile tires. And if, if a visitor came in there, John Fresco went see him. And, uh, you know, John was in Kansas. We didn't know him, and he he applied for this position. And we, you know, if you don't know a whole lot about a fella, but I remember Roy Mays, our associate minister, said, "Look, anybody wants a job that bad, so we hired John, and we we never made a better hire uh, because he he just fit that niche, and uh, and that, that's one reason we grow. We grew." because he did what others didn't like to do or refused to do. I loved the story about the time that I got a check through the mail. It was either for 2000 or $4,000, I don't remember which. It was from Gainesway Horse Farm, a very, very beautiful horse farm going near Paris, Kentucky. And uh, this woman said, you're my preacher, I watch you on television. and." Uh, I thought she said that she couldn't go to church because 
uh, she takes care of her parents who are elderly and who used to be the manager of the farm. So uh, I made a call on them and had prayer and thanked her for the money. But it wasn't too long after that, <laughs> she, she walked down the aisle of the church and placed her membership. So at the uh, next uh, meeting of the staff, I said, how did, how did, how, how did that happen? And Prisco said, well, I, I got her name and I just called on her. Well, the difference was I talked to her about money and he talked to her about the Lord and uh, so on. But John was uh, deeply uh, appreciated by, by not only by me, but by the staff because they, uh, I'm sure they wondered at times if all the staff was putting out as much as they could. But uh, when we called John Presco, he was always very loyal, helpful, would go I, uh, go the second mile. I love, and uh, uh, Secretary of State under Roosevelt uh, said one time, the three most important words, uh, and then some. People that do what they're supposed to do, and then some. People that can be counted on in an emergency, and then some. And John was those three words, and then some. And uh, so, even though he's not active anymore, and neither am I, but uh, there was a host of people that really uh, owe their salvation, first of all, to the Lord. But the Lord has to have hands and feet, and that's what you've been, and, and tremendous blessing. And to my ministry, you know, the senior minister gets a lot of credit, like the quarterback gets a lot of credit, but if he didn't have a good line, I mean, he'd be buried, and I got a lot of credit. But uh, his press go, and uh, our youth ministry, and the music ministry, mm -hmm. I mean, those, those were top notch, and uh, and so I, I think it. I hope that John feels uh, that he was in really one of the top churches of the nation, and uh, and he was really not just a a helper, but he he was right in the middle of it, and we praise God for that. Every game has a hero. Every award requires time and sacrifice. Every champion has a story. And every story must begin with a dream.